In this particular section of the Westminster Shorter Catechism, we are thinking about catechisms dominated by the question, Who is the Redeemer of God's elect? Redemption, there's no more precious subject. Christ, who is the Redeemer of God's elect? No person more precious. And God's elect, what a privilege to be numbered amongst the people of God. So this is a very important section. And what it does is this. It teaches us about Christ. And in the set of catechisms we'll look at today, we will come to think about Christ personally, who he is, what he means to us through three titles. And these titles are prophet, priest and king. These are scriptural descriptions. In Hebrews chapter 1, we read that God speaks unto us in these last days through his Son. We don't need prophets today as the Old Testament age had prophets because we have one prophet and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is also our priest as Hebrews 7 teaches, a high priest who became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. There never was a priest like this priest and he is our king. As we read at the very end of the book of Revelation, he is king of kings, he is lord of lords. Now each of these offices in the Old Testament they were unique in that they were the office of mediators. The king, the prophet, the priest stood between the people and God, doing the will of God in different ways. Each of these offices were anointed offices. They were anointed with oil before they could perform the office. Christ is the anointed one. The name Christ means anointed one. He has been anointed with the oil of the Spirit set aside by his Father from before the foundation of the earth that he might be our prophet, our priest and our king. And remember, it's not just that he is a prophet, priest and king or the prophet, priest and king. He is our prophet, priest and king. He fulfills these offices for us. So let us move on to the introductory question now. Number 23. What offices does Christ execute as our Redeemer? As our Redeemer, he executes the offices of a prophet and of a priest and of a king, both in his estate of humiliation and exaltation. Three key words here. Redeemer. He sets people free by paying a price. He sets people free through his humiliation. This was when he came into the world in the form of a man. This was when he descended to death in order that we might be redeemed. But he also redeems us through his exaltation because he did not remain in the grave. He rose again. He is an exalted saviour today. In each of these estates, both in his humiliation and his exaltation, he accomplishes our redemption. So let's think about the office of a prophet now. How does he execute the office of a prophet? Well, we are told, as our Redeemer, he executeth the office of a prophet in revealing to us by his word and spirit the will of God for our salvation. It's good to have the word. War would we be without a Bible? But we also need the spirit. It's not enough just to read the Bible. We also need the Holy Spirit to reveal the will of God to us. And Christ is our prophet because he speaks to us through the Holy Ghost and he reveals the will of God for our salvation. The prophets were not just people who foretold the future. Many of them did. But their first and primary duty was to the generation on which they were found, revealing the will of God. Christ is the one who reveals the will of God to us today. In Deuteronomy 18 verse 18, God said that he would raise up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. He was speaking to Moses. Moses was the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. But God would raise up a prophet from amongst the people of Israel, from amongst the Jewish people. And God's words would be in his mouth. And this is Christ, the great prophet who would arise. From olden times they were always looking for the great prophet. And in John 16 verse 13 we read, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. We today have the Holy Ghost. He is the Spirit of truth. He guides us into all truth. He is constantly leading us and guiding us. Christ was speaking to his disciples. He was going away, but he said his prophetic ministry would continue through the Holy Spirit. And today we still derive benefit from Christ's prophetic ministry through the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us through 
the word of God. And this is why we've got to read the word, think upon it. Christ speaks to us through the word. And then in number 25, we have the question, how does he execute the office of a priest? And Christ executeth the office of a priest and is once offering up of himself a sacrifice to satisfy divine justice and to reconcile us to God in the making continual intercession for us. Those words, his once offering up of himself a sacrifice. Very important. What a distinction there is between Christ's offering and the sacrifices of the Old Testament. The sacrifices of the Old Testament were continual. The priest's work was never done. It was a very tiring work, an energetic work, a work of continual sacrifices. But Christ on the cross said, it is finished. The work was done. One great sacrifice to finish all. And he today is our one great high priest. No longer do we need priests because he is our priest. And he stands between us and God as the one who offered himself as that one great sacrifice. He was both the priest and he was the sacrifice at the same time as he surrendered himself. Through this work of surrender, this work of sacrifice, divine justice was satisfied. God's law demanded that sin be punished. But Christ died taking upon himself the iniquity of us all. Divine justice was satisfied because Jesus Christ paid it all. And he reconciles us to God. Man's great problem is, is that he is at a distance from God. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We are brought to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. But although his work is finished in relation to his sacrifice, his work is not finished in relation to his intercession. At God's right hand today, he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He continually prays for us. He continually pleads our cause before his Father. We have a high priest who has died for us. We have a high priest who makes intercession for us, who prays and who never gives up praying for us. And then we come to number 26. How doth Christ execute the office of a king? Christ executeth the office of a king in subduing us to himself and ruling and defending us and in restraining all his and our enemies. He subdues us. He rules us. He restrains our enemies. He is the triumphant one. First of all, he is triumphant over us and that he has brought us from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom, his kingdom of light. He is triumphant in that he rules over us. He rules over us well. He defends us and he restrains our enemies and our enemies are his enemies. When we stand in the sight of Christ, his enemies are our enemies. Our enemies are his enemies and he will triumph over them. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 reads, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Let us give him the preeminence today, our prophet, priest and king. And let us delight ourselves to be on the side of victory, because if God be for us, who can be against us?